few years ago, I came to the realization that I was no longer comfortable in referring to myself as a Christian. Instead, I now label myself as a follower of the teachings of Jesus. I came to that decision after a lot of thought, study, and deliberation with realizations that many things that I were ta was taught in my youth were simply wrong. And I really couldn't stay within those confines. So I want to talk about that today. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. I was like many people and grew up in a church that said that they had the truth, that they had the answers, that they were always right. They said that they were so right that no one else was right, that they were the true church. And other Christians, well, they were a little bit wrong, but they were still wrong. And non-Christians, well, they were very wrong. Interestingly, how did this church know that it was right? It said that it was right and that it didn't make mistakes, that it was infallible because it said so. It's a really circular argument. It sounds like something a little kid would say. I know I'm right because I said I'm right. And that's what the argument was. So that was sort of an odd thing to grow up with. But I entered ministry from that perspective. You know, I was being trained as a hospital chaplain in the 1970s. I went through what was called clinical pastoral education. And this clinical pastoral education program was connected to my church. And one of the things they taught was that when I, as a chaplain, entered a patient's room, all of the church, all of the tradition, the teachings, the dogma, went in the room with me and were present with me in that encounter with a patient. You know, a hospital room isn't very big. That's a whole lot of stuff to put into a hospital room along with two people talking. But it had a function. That, that claim that everything that the church was went in with you had a very clear function for the chaplain. Because with it, we were taught that we should not, we could not, we dare not do or say anything contrary to the teaching of the church. Because if we did, and the person went back to their own church and heard something different, it would cause a conflict within them, an internal conflict that would lead them to question their faith and could damage their immortal soul and lead them to fall into hell all because of what we said. Wow, that was a sure way to get everyone following the same line and towing the line. Before I was permitted to study theology, I was told that I needed to study philosophy, that that would help shape my way of thinking so that I would better understand theology. So I took my, the my philosophy classes. I got a degree in philosophy. And one of the important things that I learned about from the church's perspective was something called natural law philosophy. In very brief, natural law philosophy says that everything in the universe follows set laws that were put into place by God. And with that, only the church can understand those laws. Only the church can recognize them that we mere mortals individually don't have access to this understanding because we're sinful, fallen people. Well, that seemed very odd to me because I knew enough physics and astronomy to know that there was chaos in the world, that not everything in physics followed set laws or laws that we understood, and that there was, you know, chaos and irregularity. There was regular matter, there was dark matter, there were all these different things. But yet the church seemed to have a handle on it all, somehow mysteriously, because they said so. Well, later in my philosoph philosophical studies, I was introduced to existentialism and phenomenology. 
these two approaches made a lot of sense to me. Existentialism is that we are created free. We are free beings and are responsible for ourselves with what we do with our lives. So that made sense. So that the focus is the individual who's free, moving in the world. And phenomenology is that we know what's really true for us based on what we experience. If we can't experience it, we can't know it. While well, I was fascinated and read a lot about these two philosophies, then maybe 10 years later, I was introduced to feminist theology. Feminist theology said that the theological process doesn't make any sense unless you start with your context, your particularities, the things that are unique about your situation. And the theology had to be articulated from your unique situation. And in that moment, existentialism and phenomenology came together for me in a theological process. And I found that this was echoed through things like Latin American liberation theology and process theology and other more contemporary theologies. And this began to open my world in ways I never expected. It's a short video, so I'm going to fast forward from the 80s to today. Today, I'm in a very different place. I have found that I have spent the last 40 years of my life on learning the things that I was taught in about the first 25 years of my life. And much of what I was taught was simply wrong. How I've been relearning is through exploring other theology as well as biblical studies, history, as well as learning about other traditions and becoming knowledgeable about Buddhism and Hinduism and Sufism and Native American spiritualities and, and, and many other things. And in all of that, I came to understand that the teachings of Jesus mean a great deal to me and that the purpose of the church is really twofold. The church, first of all, the Christian church, first of all, was meant to uphold the empire. It started that way with Constantine and continued by upholding European empires and colonialism and functioned to support the state. Secondly, the church functions to support itself as an institution, whatever the denomination, it's about its own self-preservation. As far as the teachings of Jesus, they're mostly given lip service. Most churches really don't hold very fast to them. And that's what I find most precious, because I find the teachings of Jesus are really life-giving and inspiring. But it's from those teachings of Jesus that I've been able to move and understand many other traditions and begin to appreciate an interspiritual perspective that understands all wisdom traditions on a level playing field. So yes, I'm a follower of the teachings of Jesus. And what that does for me is give me a certain kind of freedom. When I called myself a Christian, I felt like I had to be constrained in a box. But as a follower of the teachings of Jesus, I'm free to learn, to grow, and to evolve as the person I am most deeply in relationship to the divine mystery. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and yes, leave me some questions. Maybe you're on a similar journey of unlearning what you inherited. Share that with me, I'd love to hear it. And be sure to have a great day. Thanks for being part of Spirituality Beyond Borders.